Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Chain Talk. Today it's all about blockchain in supply chain. And you all know that that is my favorite topic because that is exactly what my own research is about, cybersecurity and supply chain and blockchain. So, and we have a great guest today. We have Ahmed Banafa, professor of engineering in San Jose State University. I'm not going to talk like always, not going to talk much. I'm going to let Ahmed introduce himself. Ahmed, please. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and I appreciate this opportunity. Um, my name is Professor Ahmed Banafa. I teach at San Jose State University College of Engineering and also I teach at Stanford University. Uh, my main focus is uh, teaching uh, uh, emerging technologies, including blockchain, uh, Internet of Things, uh, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and uh, those are really my focus. And uh, uh, my dealing with blockchain is uh, evolved from my work with uh, Internet of Things a few years ago. So you're like one of those cool professors, Ahmed? <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to ask my students. I cannot judge the myself. The touristic <laughs> ones? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they enjoy the class. Let's put it that way. That's fun, then. I would like to be your student, then. <laughs> you're welcome. You so, Ahmed, the tradition is that we start the show by asking our guests to give us one sentence definition of blockchain. And that is because we probably have a lot of audience who are willing to learn about blockchain, but don't really have a background knowledge. So we start with one sentence, like short one sentence definition of blockchain. What would that sentence be from you? Very good question, because this is exactly what everybody uh, you meet and you talk to about blockchain. That's their first question. Blockchain is a software, a code that you write and you incorporate that one, you know, in the stack of your, you know, of your uh, uh, company uh, programs. A blockchain, uh, technically speaking, and simply uh, uh, explained is a combination of two things, uh, cryptography and human logic. Uh, cryptography is the password, the username to get into the system, and human logic is the consensus of sharing the information and making that sure the information is the same and nobody to change it. You have this in mind, it's easy for you to understand why blockchain is taking the world by storm. Simple, powerful. That was still not one sentence, but I accept it as one sentence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm not expecting a professor to give me a one sentence for sure. <laughs> hey, I didn't say that, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but how would you now expand this to a one paragraph how would you elaborate on this it, it goes from the the combination of the two components which is the cryptography and the human logic uh, you know uh, blockchain has five components the, you know the first one is the peer-to-peer -peer connection you have the consensus protocol between, among the different parties the cryptography the uh, the ledger where you can write and save the information. And the last one is the validity rules, which is the rules you're gonna follow to execute it. So if, if you have an agreement, for example, just to make sure everybody understand this one, if, if you're in, in the situation uh, you know, uh, of, of somebody like me who's teaching, if I'm in the class and somebody wanna join the class, unless that person name is on a piece of paper with their name and picture, this person will get in. So I'm the only one who will allow that, the student. What if the students sneak in without me checking that? That student will be sitting there or that person will be sitting there in the class. This is the current situation, the centralized system we have, the client server system. Um, you get in, you change the information in the database and everybody accepted that. The blockchain is different where the copy of the uh, class list or roster itself is given to every student. So even if I missed it, there are another 30 students who will check and see who is this newcomer. And then if that person is not on the list, they're going to say, wait a minute, I don't see his or her name here. I don't see his picture here. With a, with a certain number of agreement, you know, something like 50%, 51% of in that classroom saying, we don't know this person, then that person will be asked to leave. If that person's name is on the list, that person will stay with us and will be confirmed. So this is the consensus, and this is the peer-to-peer, -peer, and this is the validity rule. This is the, you know, the, uh, you know, you're talking about the ledger where you can have that information. 
Uh, there's so many protocol involved with the blockchain. The one that I just described is something called gossip protocol, which is the communication and the sync between the different nodes, meaning the different students in the classroom. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for this uh, really interesting definition and, and elaboration on that. Uh, but how are you involved with uh, blockchain? Uh, my involvement is actually twofold. Number one is the uh, teaching, the academic part of it, and the research. I, I'm teaching the blockchain at both schools, San Jose State and Stanford University. And uh, the same thing, the same time, I do some research. I mean, the last article I wrote is about the uh, eight key trend technologies in a post-COVID-19 uh, world, talking about what kind of technologies we're going to see flourish and grow, uh, you know, in, in the time after this pandemic is 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 gone, and and, that's, and and why we should be ready for that. And also, I I have I have a full research about blockchain and COVID-19, how they interact with each other, and how COVID-19 is really. Uh, the catalyst for the digital transformation for everything, including the use of the blockchain. The World Health Organization is using blockchain under a project called uh, Maypasa, and that uh, Maypasa is a huge project, IBM, Microsoft, Oracle. The CEO of the company uh, contacted me a few, uh, two weeks ago. He wanted me to be on the board of advisory for that, uh, for that prize. So that's my involvement goes from the academic to you know, being an advisor for uh, a project like that may pass it to the next level, which is uh, the case of uh, advising startups about uh, how they can use blockchain in their, uh, you know, in their own ideas and how they can market it and how can they explain it. And, and so both sides in this, in the practical, the industry, and also in the academic part. That's really interesting because um, I, I, based on my personal experience, blockchain is not... Um, besides, besides being an immature technology yet itself, uh, it's even more immature when it comes to academic. So in academic world, uh, there is still a lot of research really needed to be done, but you are actually covering both. So you're involved in both academic world and industry as well. And that's, that's a really great combination, I would say. So the... Ahmed, we are talking about uh, blockchain and supply chain today. What would be the gap in supply chain that would open up some space for application and adoption of blockchain in supply chain? Uh, very good question. Um, one of the biggest problems of the supply chain is transparency. Transparency is a huge thing about it, and, and there is so many things associated with that. I mean, in a general view, uh, it is under the three T's, which is traceability, transparency, and tradability. So if you cover the three elements of the blockchain, of the, you know, the supply chain, using the blockchain, it's easy for you to benefit from the supply chain. Supply chain is, the, is actually the backbone for everything we're doing in this, in this world because you can imagine all the exchange of the goods and the services all over the world is going through some kind of a streaming or engineering streaming, which is the supply chain. And if you can uh, save, you know, trace and uh, trade at each one of the points or the joints of the supply chain with some confidence, and the, uh, the ability to audit the information and the trust that you have in that information. Uh, you save money, you save time. You're going to find yourself really uh, having much better relationship with, with other countries and other partners. We lose a lot when it comes to the inefficiency of the supply chain. And uh, a big example of, of the efficiency of the, of the supply chain is a company like Apple who control the whole supply chain for their product from A to Z. And they're saving a lot of money because they have control on everything. They don't have to worry about you know, losing anything in the middle. So, so blockchain can help with the three Ts, traceability, transparency, and tradability. If, if I would represent... Uh a typical company who is involved in any sort of supply chain, what advantages would that bring to me then? Uh, number one is you will know exactly what's going on in the supply chain from the beginning to the end. And you will know that the information is immutable. Nobody can change it. 
and you can audit that information. That would be one thing. So this is one fold of that. Uh, you send a product from country A to country B uh, at any point, at a real time, you know exactly where that product, who receive it, what's inside it. And if this product is something that has to deal with different parameters like temperature, weight, uh, sensitivity, then you will have something to record this information, either human or automated, and you will have that information saved and nobody can touch that one. So if somebody went back and say, I sent you, you know, uh, uh, 50 tons of this food, you'll receive 50 tons. You're not going to receive something less than this because down, you know, the road, you go back and check, we lost five here, we lost three here. Lost. So you know exactly what happened. And that can reflect on the case of how can we improve it. If we notice that we always lose it at point C and we at that port, then we have to go and see what's going on, why that port is always the bottleneck for us when it sends these products. The, the visibility provided by the information that you get from being transparent and traceable with the blockchain and the information cannot be changed, cannot be altered, give this assurance that, you know, and trust that, okay, I know exactly what happened. I can solve this problem. That's really great. And um, talking about traceability, uh, I think one uh, potential application of it for, in supply chain and generally in, uh, for companies, especially the ones that are um, manufacturing quite well-known brands would be to... Um, make sure that the end user actually does receive the genuine product. So they can, the end user can basically trace the product to make sure it's a genuine product and it's not a counterfeit. It's, but we all know that it's not always as beautiful as it sounds. And uh, probably with the technologies like blockchain, uh, if you talk to the companies, there is this, uh, still this uh, resistance, or there is still a guard. But why is, what are the challenges that you see on the way for, for adoption of blockchain in supply chain for companies? Uh, it, is, uh, it is the knowledge or the understanding of the technology. That's a big gap for us. When people say blockchain, the first thing comes to mind, their mind is the cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin. And that's a misconception. And uh, blockchain is a victim of that. And uh, it is just one tiny product. And it's like the famous son, you know, of, of a family, everybody, when they mention the name of the family, oh, yeah, you are so-and-so. But uh, they have so many talents on the other side. And that is one thing. So the education part of it for the uh, C-level uh, you know, executive is very important. So they understand how much they're going to save and how convenient for them to apply it. That's number one. Number two is uh, we don't have that so many, so many people who are really expert in this field. I mean, we universities still struggling of uh, having uh, specific courses. And, uh, and I'm talking about undergraduate. I mean, the graduate level, they're doing their research. There's no question about this because they have a very focused uh, uh, point to, to, uh, to deal with. But having an engineer and that engineer is a blockchain engineer. Now it's the commercial institution that doing that. Uh, I know about one or two universities in the United States that have a full degree in blockchain. So when we're going to get to that stage where we can have so many of the people who are as much as network engineer, they are a uh, blockchain engineer. And companies, what they do, uh, they, uh, they build on whatever they have. So if you have good background in encryption and on computer networks, then they just add something at the top of this one, talking about blockchain, and you are an expert in that. So we have the gap of the skills, we have the gap of knowledge, and all of these things are really pushing back the uh, executive from taking that decision because it's translated to money. Right. And I remember the situation with so many, uh, with, with the local company, you know, they, have, they invited me to talk in South San Francisco because they want the executive to understand what is blockchain. The uh, IT director, the uh, research, uh, you know, head, they know it. Uh, I gave a presentation for two hours and the vice president came to me after this and said, now I understand it. Now I know why everybody's pushing for that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just to add to your point, I would also say that uh, not only we, do, we have lack of education and knowledge uh, for, for blockchain technology, we also have um, a lot of focus on education 
uh, from a technical perspective when it comes to <coughs> uh, while the probably the executives or management team would want to know this technology from business perspective so I, I can see a lot of focus from tech technology perspective and uh, a lot of this resistance comes from the point that managers think that okay this is either too complicated or too technical that they don't want to get involved with it mm -hmm. um, on the other hand is the concept is that the te of the technology that they need to understand to see how they can probably project it in their um, work or in their business uh, but having said all of this are you a believer in blockchain <laughs> Do you think blockchain <laughs> is going to revolutionize supply chain? I yes, know that you're it, a university professor <laughs> and you're not going to give us a direct answer of yes or no. <laughs> but I want you today to forget about academic world and just be the advisor in the industry that you always are. So <laughs> just well, I mean, are you a believer <laughs> in it? <laughs> The answer is yes. I wrote a book about blockchain. It's coming wow. in June. So, so, and, uh, and what is I, the book called? A blockchain uh, technology and applications. So it's straightforward to the. It's the same course materials that I'm teaching at uh, Stanford at San Jose State with expansion on applications, expansion on you know some special topics. So the answer is yes, and. The, the other thing that in, in marketing, we always talk about the product life cycle stages. So at the four stage, which is the introduction, the growth, the maturity, the decline. Blockchain is just entering the growth. It's just the beginning of the growth cycle or the, the curve itself. Uh, you know, we, we out of the introduction, we out of the explanation, you know, we go into the, the uh, growth. This is remind me exactly, uh, you know, the time of 1996, 1997 which was the beginning of the internet here in, in the Silicon Valley. It's, it's the same feeling I have. It's the same concept, the same thing. It's a wave. And you're lucky if you can catch this wave at the beginning. If it's up in the air, if you, everybody sees that one, then you know, it's too late for you. But uh, the application for the blockchain is, is, is so huge that as much as the industry is itself, uh, all what you're going to do is just have blockchain plus something, and you will find an application for that. Uh, last week, I was giving a presentation to one of the biggest conferences, you know, uh, in the Silicon Valley, about uh, something called Reimagine 2020, which is specifically for blockchain. And I have a panel discussion, and we talk about. It. I told I told everybody, blockchain is here to stay; it's not going anywhere because it's not something new we invented. It's just a collection of old technologies and old thinking. We found a new way of doing that. Finding a, a you know a box of tools and and you look at it, it's the same tools and now you know how to use it in a better way. Uh, on us, you know, people who are in this industry, it's important to explain it to people because the name itself is is not serving the purpose by explaining the technology to, to people. It is you look at it, it's a more an academic name, blockchain. The reputation of the blockchain also is not uh, is not really uh, clear and clean because of the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, which is nothing wrong with it. I mean, cryptocurrency is not wrong. It's just uh, you know the speculations of the Bitcoin just created fear in, in the heart and the mind, even in the bankers. Whenever you say, uh, you know, let's talk about blockchain, I don't do anything with cryptocurrency. We we we. Uh, they, they just shut you off, they close the discussion. So uh, <clears throat> we're just at the beginning. I mean, we have many years to come for, for the blockchain and it's gonna be uh, moving from a buzzword into a stream, you know, you know a, a line and, and something it's as part of, of uh, the industry, similar to what happened with every technology you talk about, AI, Internet of Things, uh, cybersecurity and so on. But uh, how would you say specifically blockchain will revolutionize supply chain in this way how would that be uh, uh, excellent um, applications is the the witness of the uh, uh, you know of the blockchain effectiveness uh, companies like walmart uh, using something called the food uh, trust uh, network one known uh, network based on uh, the hyperledger technology which is ibm blockchain technology 
And they've been using it since 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And then 2019, they forced everybody's dealing with them <clears throat> that they had to be part a node of that network. Uh, the concept uh, of from the farm to the fork is a reality. So s people can look at a product and then look at the barcode and can see and trace back this product, this produce, this vegetable, this is fruit is came from a farm in Arizona or in California or and they can trace that back. And it is a reality for them, so many things. And I can give you example about other company, but the, the example of Walmart is because it's a huge company and it is a logistic company. I mean, if you think about it, it's a retail that have thousands of stores, but that's, that's what's the interface for people. This is the end point. But what's going on in the background, it's amazing. You know, uh, you know, shelves, you know, uh, sensitives, you know, you know, how they can, how they will know that they have to bring these products and how to use the RFID to send the product and to trace it. The blockchain came and saved them. If you see how much they are spending on this technology to make sure that they have, they have this, you know, traceability feature, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's just proof that, that the, the technology saved them money, saved them time. And also, this one is helpful in a case of <laughs> you have some kind of uh, you know a product that it is poisoned. If you have a contamination of some of the produce, then you can go back and check right from it is coming from this farm and go and check that farm and just shut that channel. Currently, without the blockchain, we shut down everything. If there is a lettuce, if there is certain flu fruit or certain vegetables have a problem, we just take it off the market completely. So restaurants, hotels, uh, you know, groceries, no more. Economically, this is wrong, but this is you have to save life to do this. So what about if we have something that will tell us, listen, it is only coming from that farm. So everybody who is dealing with that farm will know exactly to take it out. Knowledge, you know, I mean, I mean, knowledge comes from information and information comes from, you know, having that information through a system that will trace it and blockchain will give you that. So that's just just an example. Another one is companies like Nestle, companies like Tyson Food, companies like Unilever, uh, Dole, you know, all those companies, they saw that coming and they 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 seen that example and they're following that. Uh, a mining, uh, large mining firms, this one, Diamond Industry, also using, you know, using the blockchain for, you know, for tracing back all the, you know, diamonds that from the, you know, from the source until they sell it to the, to the customer. So when we talk about the uh, blockchain and how blockchain will help with the, the supply chain, just look at the name, blockchain supply chain. You see that they're actually related. Exactly. And um, one one typical question that I, I get I often get asked about blockchain. I'm going to ask you now today to to explain to our audience is um, a lot of it is said that blockchain is going to omit or at least minimize the number of intermediaries in the supply chain. But uh, what is going to happen to these intermediaries then? How are they going to do business? Or uh, are we really going to have a world with no intermediaries? Or are we going to have new type of intermediaries with adoption of blockchain? Uh, good question. And this is the this is the, uh, uh, the the natural and traditional question every time you face when you have a new technology. We have the internet and everybody thought that no more libraries, right? And uh, TV will die. Uh, but we still have everything. We still have the library, we still have the TV, we still have the internet. It's just the share of the market that's going to change. So they, this, the same thing I heard about the AI. Uh, people are going to lose their job. Yes, there are certain people who lose their jobs. There's no question about it. But on the other side of the coin, you're going to have more people that are really into the market and they will gain, you know, will, will the, the, the difference is positive. Uh, a statistic about this one is uh, you have, a, you have a, something like, a, you know, 1.8 million going to lose their jobs in a certain industry. And then you have 2 million that new to the market if they learn the skills of the AI. The same thing goes with the blockchain. Blockchain is, is opening a big market for 
for so many people to learn and add at the top of the information they have. And remember, when we talk about the blockchain, blockchain is not completely new technology. It's a new way of using old technologies. So if somebody has all these old technologies, have the communications, have the encryptions, they just you know, uh, update their skills and they go into the blockchain field with a very strong background. Uh, you know, having people as, as a middle person or middle organization will disappear, you know, in, in certain industries. The reason for this one is the need for creating them were going to disappear. It's not, I think, it's not something against them. We needed them because we need some kind of verification. You need somebody to check that one. If the system can do that for you, you don't need that. You don't need, you need uh, the people that they, they, there will be another market for them. It's, uh, it's part of the life cycle. If you don't change, you know, you're left behind. And there's always a new business lines, new jobs that are going to be introduced to the market with new technology. Um, one favorite question of mine is always about the relationship between blockchain and digital transformation. How, how, do, you, how do you see this? What would you, see, what would you say the relationship is between blockchain and digital transformation? Uh, good question. The uh, digital transformation is the destination, you know, and, and in, er in order for you to get to digital transformation, you need vehicles, you need ways to do that. Uh, one of them is blockchain, which is digitization. I mean, look at the situation we have here in the United States when everybody suddenly uh, switched from being in the office, in the physical world to the virtual world. Suddenly we, you know, you know, a big chunk of the population discover that you can do your work from home or you can do it in a way where you don't have to be physically at work. So you can do it virtually. And uh, a survey came this morning, 75% of the, uh, for IT worker in the United States, uh, you know, they, uh, they look at the, uh, the, uh, the work at, uh, you know, uh, online virtually as, as a possibility for them. They say, you know, why not? Why not have, uh, you know, uh, we can do the same work here. Uh, there are some companies uh, announced in the past few weeks, uh, Twitter, this said, if you want to work from home, you can work from home forever. And Facebook is planning to have 50% of their workforce is, you know, remote. Um, Google did the same thing. They say that we will have a, a chunk of our workers will, re will uh, work from home or remotely and we'll give them $1,000 for setting up their offices. So, uh, we we're not going to have this uh, discussion and this kind of generosity from the different companies and open mind about virtual work or remote work without this situation of the COVID-19, which is just a catalyst that smashed all the barriers and pushed everybody to go to the digital transformation. And the vehicle here for the blockchain now, we need a technology that will guarantee for us the trust and now we're going to look around and say which technology that will give it to us. AI will give us this. Cybersecurity will give us this. Internet of Things will give us now. Okay, how about blockchain? Blockchain will give it to us. The biggest winner in this horrible pandemic we have, planet Earth is going through, the biggest winner is technology. And, and it is just emerged, you know, showing everybody you need me and you're going to use me. And that is, that is what everybody is discovering. Everybody now, uh, you know, a video conferencing expert. Everybody is, is yeah. trying to take whatever they do in, in real life and have it, you know, in a virtual world. The other part of the story, which is part of the digital transformation, is what we talk about it all the time, about the digital twin. And the digital twin concept that was not clear for anyone. You know, for many times when I explain to the students or when I'm a talk to, in, a, in a, some kind of a discussion with industrial expert, some of them will, some of them heard about it or, or, or know about it, and you will find some people who say, what is this? You know, the, the, the parallel universe we have with the digital uh, twin and the testing and all these things, now it's going to be really a reality for so many of the businesses because it's going to make it so easy for them to update their information without being in the, in the office or in the factory. And blockchain is another vehicle, another tool by the digital transformation. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's going to help a lot because it's going to fill the gap of trust. Yeah, that is a really great way of looking at it. Thank you so much for that. But what would you say is the drive wheel for companies out there in adoption of blockchain? 
Good question. Very good question. Uh, one of the uh, one of the examples of of how companies is really implementing technology is to look at the industry leaders. If you look at Walmart, the example if we have, you look at SAP. SAP has a an app that used to be for supply chain. They now use this one for tracing uh, the return medications to the to the pharma industries. So they, they, they change it so it can trace back the medication when they sell, when, when a company is, uh, sell their medications or their, the, the medicine to the pharmacies, the hospital. And then uh, uh, at the end of the, the year, they return the access. They want to make sure that they are re receiving their own medicine. It's nobody's modifying this one because it's about seven to, uh, you know, to $10 billion industry of return uh, medications. Uh, they use that. So when you see the leaders in the market, using this kind of technology, then you're going to start thinking about it, how this is going to help me. You're going to think about this one, how this is going to save you know, uh, time and money and staff. Those are the three elements of, of the business. And, uh, and, and, and you, you see that saving, you see the numbers in front of you, they're going to say, okay, so it's, I, would like to have, I would like to use it. Uh, keep in mind, uh, blockchain is not for everyone. This is a reality. Yeah. Uh, if you can... Uh, you know, manage your businesses with a simple database because the size of your business is is a certain size. Then be with it. You know, just stick with the, the with the uh, uh, database. It's when you get to a certain level where you start questioning the validity of the information. Many parties involved with that. You would like to have more trust of your results. Now we're going to start saying database as a centralized system is not good for me. And, and, uh, and the, at that stage, you're going to start looking for the solutions. And one of them is the blockchain. Exactly. And uh, just one thing probably uh, all the companies and uh, people out there need to keep in mind is not to solve a simple problem with a complicated solution. And right. that is you, what you can see a, lo a lot now with, with technologies like blockchain, that they are, in a way, they, they can become attractive and sexy and hype and many companies they just want to have it because it's blockchain they don't really realize that they are really fixing a very simple problem with a complicated solution that is going to cost them a lot and that they could easily solve it with any other technology out there with much more cost effective way so and uh, but uh, if i would represent a company typically being in a supply chain what would be the biggest or what would be the obstacles that um, stops me from adoption of blockchain? Uh, you know, uh, two folds. Number one is a technical fold and the other one is a business one. The business one is, it's expensive. You have to understand that. And because you have to hire people, you have to join a network uh, like IBM network for tracing the products. Uh, and you have to have a setup for that when you have to label all the products. So there is a lot of work involved when it comes to the business. From the other side is the, the technical part of that one, which is you're talking about understand the technology, uh, appreciating the technology. So this is the the part of the sales for for companies of the blockchain, whether it's a small companies or huge companies, is to bring everybody at the same level so <clears throat> they can appreciate the technology, um, and and to tell them if they need it or not. They usually, you know, and I've been through some of those uh, you know uh, meetings. Uh, there is a questionnaire. Yes, no. Yes, no. It's like a tree, a decision tree. So you ask the customer, do you need this? You need this. You need this. How many people are involved in this? And by the end of the day, you can tell the customer, listen, you don't need it. Or you can tell the customer, you need a private blockchain or you need a public blockchain or you need a hybrid blockchain exactly. network. So and this is, this is, will be, this is, uh, uh, this is part of how can you explain it to people because you are diagnosing the whole problem they have. And you get to the point where they say, it's a simple thing. You just take you know, one of those aspirin and you will be done with it. Or you know you have to go through that process. You can, so you can do that one. And, and once the customer have this understanding, it's easy for them to see the value. It's not the other way around. Where people, they say, how much am I going to save if I have the blockchain? It's tell me the problem. Let's see if blockchain is the right tool for you. 
And if it's the right tool for you, then we'll talk. If not, then a simple, you know, Oracle database or, or Microsoft or, you know, a database can help, can help you with this one, SQL or, or another another type of databases can help you this when you save time you say and you will find thousands of people who will run that that database for you because it's in the industry for many years but the blockchain you have the people who are run it you have the technology you have the tracing you have you have the software you have to install so at this stage and this is goes back to the uh, the point of where is this technology now it's at the beginning of the growth so there is so many projectiles for it it can go very sharp to the you know you know to the you know north it can go very slowly so it depends on what's going to happen next from people who are you know implementing this technology one one um, a specification of supply chain is that it, it involves um, <coughs> companies of different sizes so you probably in a supply chain have a very small company medium sized company and large companies. Uh, would that create a challenge in adoption of blockchain and supply chain? Yes, because of the capital involved in that. Now, it is a decision, um, or it's a business decision. Uh, how much are you going to save on the long term? Uh, you know, uh, who will support that? You know, the, one, of the, uh, one of the startup that presented at my class at Stanford is um, uh, a supply chain company that deals with the uh, export of fish from India to the Philippines. And 40% of the fish, uh, you know, uh, spoiled in the way to the Philippines. Uh, and uh, there is no way for people to, you know, to say, to save that one. Why 40? Why not 20? Why it is not 50? Uh, there's always dispute about, I sent you like 2,000, you know, boxes, 2,000 tons of fish, and you only, and you only receive about 60. Uh, 600 of that one. So this company came to the market, but it came because the United Nation supported the company because this is, has to do with the, the, the word food supply. So they supported this company and this company, what they have done, they did more than just the supply chain. They did the, the supply chain, uh, you know, design, they did the supply chain. Also, they did the Internet of Things. They have sensors for the temperature, for the weight, for the humidity. So, so they, and at the same time, all this data was stored in, a, in their own blockchain. They have their own blockchain, they design it. And that showed them at what point the fish start, you know, becoming spoiled at what point the fish start, you know, they start losing, you know, that, that huge 40% of the shipment. And the next shipment improve, the next shipment improves. So this has showed you that, that it's sometimes when you're talking about the blockchain, you have to, technically speaking, clean the plate before you even start. You have to go, you know, in a situation like uh, uh, the food trust of IBM, you're going to deal with the farm. You have to deal with everybody there to, to have everything automated, everything digitized. And the down the road, you have the thing has to be registered. And how can you send the signal of what is the weight of the truck? I mean, if it stops somewhere, you know, if, if the weight is now 5,000 pounds, you know, the next, next stop it is uh, 4,950. What happened to that 50 pounds? So all, all the planning here is not simple. And, 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 and uh, it depends on the resources of the company if they'd like to do it. That's why the example I mentioned are big names. Uh, Unilever, Nestle, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies like Walmart and, and, and uh, the mining companies and uh, the diamond companies, all of them, they have the resources and they are willing to take the risk and to implement a new technology because that's going to help them in the long run. This can trickle down to simple solutions, small solution to medium and small companies. But that goes back uh, to the basic question. Do I need this technology at this stage? Is it worth it for me? I mean, it's like putting, uh, you know, uh, a Cadillac engine on a uh, Volkswagen, you know, and say, okay, so, so you, you put this one. I don't need that much power. I, I need something that will take me from point A to point B. Let's stick with that. I don't want to hire somebody... In the company, I pay that person $2 million if my sales are 200 Why? Because that person is so good. Well, it's good. A big company will hire that person. I need somebody who will be within my own capabilities. Exactly. But on the other hand, the one discussion would be then, um, if in a supply chain, then the bigger players are um, ruling, are 
uh, let's take uh, security as an example in supply chain. Uh, most of the security attacks and cyber attacks that we have in supply chains today are basically through smaller companies in the chain that actually they, they can attack bigger companies. And that was exactly what happens to Maersk in 2017, right? The attack to the huge Maersk was through a family um, right. business, Ukrainian, 12 employees, very small company. Uh, if they are not uh, able of catch up, catching up with bigger brands, what will happen eventually to them? Uh, this is this is going to go back to the responsibility of how the big companies looking at that. I mean, the example of Walmart dealing with a farm. I mean, exactly. you not expect those farms to spend money on sensors or expect them to, uh, you know, uh, follow a certain digital process. You don't expect them this one. That's part of the expenses. And the example you mentioned about a very small family operation, well, that is correct. That that's going to be a weak point because. You know, you are secure as the weakest link you have in the system. So if you have a weak li you know, link in any of your systems, that is your security. So people can, can get this. And this is why the planning is part of that. That's why you see companies when they have it like SAP, you know, we're dealing with the pharmacies with this one. They have a very specific rules the pharmacies has to follow when they are returning this, this medication. They, they have to follow the certain certain codes, certain standards for this. The same thing can go with that. There's no 100% perfect system. We understand that. There always will be somewhere in the system where somebody dropped the ball and, and will get there. And that's how you improve it. Uh, you know, we, there, we are at the beginning. You know, I hope that within five years, you know, maybe uh, if, if for, yeah, for yeah, companies as well. yeah, that's, we'll have a package, which is like a blockchain as a service where you can just sell that package to people there. They can just deploy it and it's going to cover everything. Exactly. Hopefully, you know, we can have something like that. Which will definitely be coming in future. And uh, the last but not least question, and that is the fairy tale question, I call it. Uh, how would you describe a future of supply chain with and without blockchain? Uh, once, once you taste the, uh, you know, the the beauty and the protection you have, and the information and the power that blockchain will give you, with the information, uh, you know, uh, collected all the way from from the from the source to the destination, it's very hard for you to go back and say, I can, you know, I, you know, I don't like to have the blockchain. Well, you have to see it to believe it. So for the companies now, they don't use it. For them, it's still a big unknown. Uh, they're dealing with the small fires. Well, if there's a problem in a certain part of the supply chain, we have to deal with it. But if they have this solution that encompasses the whole blockchain for a certain product or a service, and they start seeing that I have this real-time understanding of the flow of the product and the services, and, and I can tell you that at this point, at this, this is what happened, I can make a smart decision. I can, and that decision, I'm not going to just make it based on, you know, a previous or old information. That decision will save me time and money and staff. And this is what the companies are looking for. And once they see that one, they say, you know, this is the future. We have to stay with that. So for me, is you, uh, you know, seeing, using is believing for people to, uh, to, uh, uh, to deal with the uh, blockchain in the supply chain universe. So you think it all starts with the small evidences, but you definitely see a bright future for supply chain with blockchain. I do. I do. I see that it's one of the, one of the you know, first applications for the uh, blockchain is the supply chain. It's, it's because supply chain, there's a lack of the trust. Uh, exactly. There's a lack of, you know, I mean, the three T, we talk about them, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, traceability, uh, transparency, and then tradability. When you talk about transparency is a huge thing in the, in the, uh, a supply chain. I don't know yeah. what happened to my product. So if, if you if you come to me and you pound the table and they say I can give you you know transparency, I can give you traceability, and you can trade, you know, with with confident. My next question is is what is it? And then okay. you show me the result. Then you, I'm sold. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, that was our uh, episode about blockchain and supply chain. 
everyone knows that we usually have a follow-up event, a live discussion on this. And how it works is people usually watch our episode, hopefully at least, before jumping on the live session. But uh, we are going to have our live session uh, with Ahmed on the 3rd of June at 5 p.m. Central European time. So we look forward to having you all on that live session and uh, just jump in and ask whatever question you have from uh, Ahmed. You, we don't always have a chance to have a professor in the house. So <laughs> this is the one chance that you, you should not miss it. Thank you so much, Ahmed, again. And uh, let's hope for the bright future of supply chain to come as soon as possible. Thank Absolutely. you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.